this is a parasocial relationship. Uh, people engaging in chat and us having these conversations and hanging out as regularly as we do as a parasocial relationship. Um, I think a lot of people here would say, myself included, that this is a healthy parasocial relationship. There are also unhealthy parasocial relationships. Parasocial relationships are just like any other relationship. Some of them are healthy. Some of them are not. Some of them are neutral. It really depends on what they're being used for, how they're being relied upon, and what's happening within them. And so long as the context of parasocial rela the parasocial relationship is understood by both parties. Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a similar consensual dynamic that a normal relationship is. So... It's not a black and white thing. It's not like all parasocial relationships are bad and all in-person relationships are good. Parasocial relationships are just as complex. Think of it this way. In in in-person relationships and like, you know, common relationships, when boundaries get blurred, that's when problems present. So if you are like if you're friends and then a person starts to gain more intimate feelings and then they start to push boundaries, that creates a problem, right? Because now there's a misunderstanding of the context of the relationship and there's not an alignment on it. Parasocial relationships work the same way. So sometimes people with the parasocial relationships will start to treat the parasocial relationship as they would a in-person relationship and they will start to blur boundaries in their mind. That starts to create problems, right? So that's why it's really important to acknowledge the context of any relationship we're in. We have different rules, different expectations, different dynamics for different types of relationships, and there's a complexity to all of those. So it's important not to just throw them into buckets and say, this is what here, this is good, this is good, this is bad. It's these are all very complex and can be good and can be bad, but we have to take into account different dynamics within those relationships. So yes, mutual acknowledgement of the nature of the relationship is deeply important. And that's something that actually happens in therapy too. We have to, I have to acknowledge the dynamics of a therapeutic relationship as being different from a friendship or from a normal outside relationship. The thing to remember about online relationships or people that you really only engage with through electronic means is that often you have the ability to think before you say something. Now you may say to yourself, well, that's wonderful. That helps me be really engaging when I'm texting with people or when I'm like Snapchatting or whatever. But it puts a weird pressure on in-person engagement because you have to think a little bit more on the fly and you can't curate your responses to people all the time. There's less gap there. When people start to see that happen, it can generate anxiety because now they don't have what they've been relying upon which is to basically have a whole bunch of like little barriers in between the engagement itself. So if you do rely completely on electronic means of communication where you can really curate your, your responses, you are going to need to pay attention to how you can improvise more and use more of your gut reactions to things. Otherwise, you're going to inadvertently reinforce for yourself that you have to have these means in order to communicate helpfully or usefully. So it, that it can, that's a lot of times where it comes from. And it's a lot of my work with social anxiety, particularly in recent years has been related to that because it's people will be like, I'm so adept when I talk online, but all of a sudden you put me in person and I, ah, it's because there's way more to read. It's not just words. Like it, it's, it's a very complicated endeavor being social, particularly with language and nonverbals and stuff is a ridiculously complicated endeavor that we tend to water down into being something that's very basic. And it's not very complex. Being aware of that complexity isn't necessarily a bad thing, but overly attending to it can be bad as well.